Hello again. In this video we're going to talk about a uh, common term in dealing with computer programs, bugs. And these are the errors that you put into programs. Now the, the terminology actually comes from a historical situation where the first bug was actually a moth um, and it had flown into a very large computer and, and caused a short circuit and this was you know in the very early days of, of computing uh, the term, while it's still used, is really not indicative of what modern bugs are at all uh, because while the moth flying in wasn't anyone's fault unless perhaps someone had left the door open, when, when you have a bug now it's because you wrote something that is incorrect in your code. Now, bugs are very significant to us and so we actually classify our bugs and there are three main forms of bugs and so I'm going to go into our sorts here and we'll talk about our three forms of bugs the first one is a syntax error syntax errors are when you actually enter something that's not valid for the language so in the, our case Scala if you put something in your program and it is not valid Scala you get a syntax error the second type of error is a runtime error. In a runtime error, you only get to this if there are no syntax errors. So the code compiles, it all uh, fits together in the right way, and it starts running. But while it's running, it does something improper and it crashes. Okay, that gives you a runtime error. The last error is a logic error. Okay, and so um, what causes a logic error is your all the syntax is fine, your code compiles, it runs, it runs all the way through, it gets to the end. And unfortunately when it gets to the end, instead of giving you the right answer, it gives you some wrong answer. Okay. Now these three kind of form a hierarchy. And in general, syntax errors are the easiest to deal with and logic errors are the hardest to deal with. And especially in the tracking them down. And so I want to use these as an example and I'm going to take one of our sorts and I'm going to create all three of these errors. So let's go to our bubble sort here. And examples of a uh, of syntax errors can be as simple as things like typos. So for example, maybe I decided to call my variable temp but down here I just referred to it as TMP. That's an example of a syntax error. And the thing is if I try to run this, you get a message that looks like this. Every time you've seen a message like this, you know, it might say something different, but it, it gives you, it talks about what file you're in, it tells you what line in the file you're on, and it gives you some description of, of what went wrong. In this case, not found, value TMP. It even has a little character there showing you where the TMP is. And so if we go to line 34, sure enough, that's this line. And now, in some ways, this wasn't the change that I made, but the problem is that this TMP doesn't match the TMP, uh, the TEMP up here. And so that gives you a syntax error. Syntax errors are the best of the three. Now, as a novice programmer, you've probably come to hate syntax errors. Uh, they can be very annoying. Um, syntax errors are the reason why I will pause in my coding and come over and run Scala frequently to make sure I get rid of my syntax errors as I'm going. But the advantage of the syntax error really is what you see right here. Okay? Syntax errors give you a lot of information. They tell you what line number they occurred on. They give you some message about what's going wrong and, and they can even a lot of times show you where on the line that something is going wrong. Okay, so they provide a lot of information for you to help with this. Other syntax errors, in fact we saw some of these when I was in a recent video. Let's say I forget to close off a parentheses, then we get something like this that says line 36 error, close parentheses expected but close curly brace found. Now of course line 36 is down here. And you might wonder, well, well, that's not where you left off the parentheses. The parentheses was up here. However, because of the nature of, of the syntax, it would have been perfectly happy for this to be all part of the big if um, in some situation. Maybe I would have actually done that. 
Uh, so a lot of times with syntax errors, you do have to look on the lines above it, but they're highly informative generally, and they, they very much help you define what it was that you messed up. That's a syntax error. Yeah. The next type of error is a runtime error. Okay, and so to demonstrate a runtime error, I'm going to forget or leave out something here. I'm going to get rid of the minus one. Now, everything that's in here is perfectly valid Scala. Okay. This is going to pass the Scala compiler with no problem whatsoever. And then it starts running. However, when it starts running, I get this big dump of a whole bunch of information for, every, for telling me what went wrong. This is the type of printout that you get with a runtime error. And so if you look here, this says sorts.scala. And then array index out of bounds exception 2000. Okay. Then if you know how to read this, it actually tells you more information. So this is a stack trace. This is telling you uh, where it was that the answer, that the error occurred. And in particular, it occurred in our file on line 31. And this was called by something in another file on line 81, which was called by our file on line 30, which was called by another file on line, 30, on line 78 which is called by our, line, our file on line 30, boom, 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 boom. And so you can go back and you can track what called what. A lot of times, so in this situation, the last thing that actually caused the error was in our code. A lot of times though, that won't be the case. And the last line that actually causes the error is in some code that you didn't write uh, and you have no control over that. So what you have to do is you have to go back and look at the last line that was in your code. So what does this say? This says line 31. And it says an index out of bounds exception. And it gives you some additional information, 2000. In other words, you tried to index to, to access index 2000 of some array, and apparently that was out of bounds. Now, if you happen to remember from down here, uh, no, that was 20,000. Did I make my arrays? Where did I make an array in here for doing my, oh, it's my test sort function right here. It creates an array of 2,000 elements. Okay, so this is where that magic 2,000 is coming in. Runtime errors are typically harder to, to track down than syntax errors. They are still informative. You still have the stack trace and you still have at least some information about what's going on, but they generally require more thought to, to fix. In this case, it's an off by one error. Okay. Generally, your runtime errors will be things like exactly like this. You went out of bounds on an array, or you, uh, another common one, though it's not that common in Scala, not nearly as common as it is in Java, is a, a uh, null pointer exception. Um, if, you, if you use things like array.fill instead of creating new arrays, you should generally not run into null pointers in, in Scala but it is still possible for them to happen. So this just, it's running, and then something goes wrong while, while it's running. And you have to go and track it down. But you do have some information about how to do it. Now, the last type of error is the logic error. And in order to reproduce this, I'm actually going to do something that I saw a student do recently. And that is basically to forget the inner loop in a for loop, okay? So when doing the bubble sort. Um, oh, darn it, then, okay, let me do that and switch this to J. Notice that without switching the J, I technically had not a, uh, I didn't have a runtime error anymore, I had gone back to a syntax error because J was not no longer being declared. This compiled, it ran. I didn't get the big stack trace printing out. Everything seems to be happy, except for the fact that our bubble sort is no longer sorting. Well, because we're not going through enough times. We're only doing one pass and doing the swaps and, and that's not enough. So, um, but it runs really fast. Uh, yeah. Logic errors are typically the hardest to find. 
And the reason is because this didn't tell me anything about where I screwed up. Okay? I just know that in this case bubble sort didn't work. Now for this particular program that's actually a fair bit of information and I know where, at least have some inclination of, uh, indication of where I should go and look for this. A lot of times logic errors will not really help you at all and the, you'll just somewhere in your program something messed up and you have to start tracking it down and so you get to start inserting print statements and figuring out where it is that it goes from the behavior that you were expecting to the behavior that you weren't expecting. So those are our three types of errors. The syntax error, the runtime error, and the logic error. While you might be frustrated with syntax errors as a novice programmer, really they are the best type of error. And one of the wonderful things about Scala is that Scala makes lots of errors into syntax errors. Because Scala does fairly strict static type checking, um, it reduces the number of runtime errors and logic errors that you have. A lot of the things, if you screw up when you're, when you're entering a program, you typically get a syntax error out of that. Uh, other languages are more likely to give you runtime errors or logic errors. You're still going to get them in, in Scala. You're still going to occasionally mistype something and sometimes you'll mistype something that is actually, and what you type in is still valid Scala. But that's not as likely. So keep these in your head. Uh, it's good terminology. You're going to probably have to, to think about these things and know how to deal with them uh, as you continue on in your career in computer science.